Hello everyone, thank you for joining me live and for also for catching the replay. Hello. I tend to have te technical difficulties when I'm on Periscope and I don't know why. Sometimes I'll sign on and then it will freeze and I have to start all over again. So this is my second tr attempt and I hope it stays. So for thank you for joining. My name is Joanna and I'm from Monsters Cards. At www.woundstuscards.com and I talk and write about emotional healing. I'm especially passionate about connecting healing with the scriptures, with the word of God, so that you can see how Jesus can relate to your pain, um, how scripture can be used to assist in your healing, and how that can that is what causes complete healing and complete recovery. So that's what I talk and I write about. That's what I do seminars and workshops about. That's what my e-courses are about. And whatever I do tend to tend to be around that. So I wanted to share a little bit about my weekend. I did a scope on Friday before we left home. I went camping this weekend. And, you know, as we were leaving, I was thinking, oof, I wish I was I'd not made the commitment to attend. I wish I was, I'd sent my husband ahead with the children and I could have a nice weekend at home, just me staying in bed all weekend. But nevertheless, I'd committed and I decided to go ahead. But I'd made an arrangement to sleep inside. I was going to be one of the women who sleep indoors and not in tents outside because I'm thinking that probably is going to be a little bit too much for me. Nevertheless, when we got there, my son, my baby, the six-year-old, well, I'm not supposed to call him that, but he is, wanted me to stay outside with him. And I tried to negotiate and bargain, but it wasn't working. He wanted to stay with mommy. And I thought, oh. So I made a decision to, to stay with him. And thankfully, the weather was okay. I had a my camp bed, and someone gave me a hot water bottle. So I was really cozy, and it was okay. It was all right. I didn't sleep much, but it wasn't because I was outdoors. It was just the nature of, you know, sleeping with the children and needing to do different things. So I function, it was okay. I coped and I didn't really didn't really mind sleeping in the tent in the tent. But despite that I, I thought about my experience and I thought, you know, for me to when things happen in life unexpectedly and for us to be able to deal with it, we have to adjust our mindset. I had to adjust my mindset because I knew when the arrangements were made for camp, I negotiated sleeping indoors. I know my husband wouldn't mind sleeping in a tent with the children. And so I negotiated sleeping indoors and I was kind of okay with that. That was, that was the conditions under which I wanted to go. And so when I had to change, I also had to readjust my mind to this new situation. What, is, what was it? And it's not the first time I've slept in tents. I have, but it was over probably maybe nearly 14 years ago was my last attempt. So my, uh, my mindset had to be adjusted to meet this new challenge. And what is important is that we have to be ready mentally to meet any situation, to meet any challenges that we face in life. We have to be kind of mentally prepared. But how are, you, how are you going to be mentally prepared for a crisis? When something happened unexpected that will catch you off guard how can you be prepared for that you can't be prepared for the unknown for things that you don't know is going to happen so but there are three things that we can do that will enable us enable you to be able to face those challenges those crises with a, a, a ready attitude with a smile with peace because these three things would have been in place and so the first one is I'm gonna go through them really quickly and perhaps deal with them in, in more detail in another scope. So the first one would be resilience. So resilience will help us to deal with unexpected events, will put us in a place where we can quickly mentally adjust and be able to cope without any, any fallout, anything happening. So resilience, and how do we build that? There, there are unfortunately some people that have resilience and some that don't. And so you will know if you're resilient, if when something happens, you don't fall apart. If you don't fall apart for everything that happens. There, there's some that every little thing that happens is crash. Um, but 
with, with life you can't crash for everything I know that there's some big things that happen like bereavement and grief and loss and and some of those things that will cause us to 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 try chatter and chatter is not broken but to crumble a little but for some if the little things are causing you to crash if communication difficulties if if the little cracks when they appear in your life cause you to crumble and to crash it means that you need to begin to build resilience and how do you do that how can one build resilience first you have to look at your mindset you have to look at your thought patterns you have to look at your um, who those who are around you and I call that scaffolding you know when they're building a when they're building and they put scaffoldings up to to um, help the builders as the, 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 the put the foundation in place that's what this will need in order to help you to build resilience accountability and trust uh, so the people around you you'd have to be accountable to and sometimes that will means being challenged but it's very important that you build resilience, that you're able to cope, you're able to function when situations happen in, in life without crumbling. And as I said, I'll deal with this in more extent on over and worse scars and also in other scopes. So look out for that. So support is another important factor in helping to, to, to stay afloat when life happens. So who is your support system? Um, I've worked with people who say nobody now there is no way we can get through life and deal with the challenges and the situations that happen when nobody is our support we need support um, and if, if, if you're looking at your life right now as you listen to this as you watch this and you're realizing that for you if you were asked a question nobody would have to be the answer you really need to look at that and it may not be anything that you've done wrong, but I know some people choose to, to be, um, well, not lonely and isolated. Because I know that sometimes it's a pattern of rejection that forces some people into choosing um, to be by themselves. Because fear and rejection again and, and abandonment. But I want to encourage you to look around you. Is there anybody? Is there a group that you could join? Is there um, anybody that could stay alongside you and help you to um, to help you to build resilience that you need? Because support is important when things happen in life to help you to manage it. Okay, even if it's somebody to call on the phone, somebody to text every now and again, um, somebody to take you to go for a walk with, somebody to go for a drink with. When I say drink, I mean a cup of tea <laughs> or a cold drink. Um, so, somebody like that who can stand alongside you, somebody to listen to you, somebody who will come over with the chocolate, somebody who will support you in dealing with the challenges when they come. And the other one, the last one is dependence on God. Now, we there's nothing that we can go through in life that we can go through successfully without him. We need him for everything and anything that we will face in life. And the reason why he's so best placed to deal with this is because he has gone through everything and anything that we have been through is going through now and will go through. And if you've listened to my scopes before or see me on, 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 um, on Facebook or on YouTube, this is what I consistently say. So having him as a very present help will help you to manage the unexpected events in life. So when an unexpected event happens, you can quickly pray and it doesn't mean, you know, going in your closet all the time or kneeling down or wherever you are, you can just say a quick prayer. You can talk to him and you can tell him what's happening so he can provide the strength that you will need to face that new difficult situation. So that's resilience, supporting, um, support and dependence that will help you to manage and to deal with the unexpected difficulties in life. I hope that you will find a way to begin to build resilience. You will begin to take an inventory of your life and to see if when situations happen, what do I do? Do I crumble at the little crises that come? How do I, how do I manage them? And if I, if you found that you're not, you need to develop more resilience, it might be 
how do I do that? How, how do I begin to build resilience? Reach out to me on woundsdiscards.com and I will let us have a conversation or reach out to someone near you, um, to your church, to your pastor, to um, your, your GP. If, if it is, that is an issue that needs counseling and you, you know that can be supplied through your doctor. If you need to take an inventory, take an inventory to see what do I need to do to be able to put some scaffolding in place so I can deal with it unexpected difficulties in life. I do hope you've gained value. I love talking um, to you. I love sharing these um, insights that I receive and I hope that you would have gained value from them. I'll see you next time. Bye.